we needed to do Mars, the surface of Mars, in a controlled landscape. And the stage facilities in both places uh, didn't compare to where we are now in Budapest, in the Core Studios, where they have the largest stage in the world, stage six. And we decided that we could actually do an exterior Mars on the stage as it was so big and so high that you could light it for an exterior and control everything. It actually looks enormous on camera. Uh, you have no doubt that with the compositing of Martian skies and distant volcanoes and craters that uh, you could compete with um, you know, actual exterior landscapes. And we will add to those with exterior shooting in Jordan, um, where we plan to go in a couple of weeks, and continue, you know, the journeys and the exterior scenes and extend out from, you know, the stage uh, sets that we've done here and um, with green screen extensions. When it comes to the look and the styling, that's where I think we had more of an input uh, our rover vehicle and our uh, hab habitat were, I think, pushing the, the boundaries beyond what they've been considering. Um, their ideas, I think, are much more practical and on a smaller scale. Since we're Ares 3, we presume that there's been two previous missions, which have been mostly robotic cargo missions, um, bringing prefabricated elements, and then um, engineer uh, manned missions for assembly and um, getting all the systems up online on the surface of Mars. So the research scientists, which is where our story begins, can arrive and, you know, uh, basically, you know, do a science mission on the surface of the planet, looking for resources, water, minerals, um, evidence of life, um, analyzing rocks and looking for molecular evidence of uh, life, um, previous life forms on Mars. Going back to some of the previous um, missions from JPL, including the Pathfinder, which is pivotal to the storytelling, which is an older probe from 1997, which our astronaut Mark Watney um, retrieves and uses to get into communication again with Earth is essential. They were very helpful with um, drawings and technical information about how that worked and the components of which we had to replicate. And we have a fully practical working pathfinder um, which we use um, throughout the movie. A lot of these things were discussed with Ridley Many, many production meetings, conference calls with both JPL and NASA scientists to try and discuss, you know, what the reality was, what, how far we could push the um, technology, you know, with what they have in mind in, in, in the future missions that they're planning. And, you know, where necessary, how much um, creative license we might have in areas where there were really no clearly defined parameters. When you see the exterior of the Hermes ship, you see all kinds of solar panels, heat dissipation fins and panels, um, fuel cells, water storage cells, oxygen storage cells, communications modules, um, navigation and command modules, numbers of airlocks, and all in connect, interconnected into a, a whole, which, you know, is basically a, a functional design, but also has a certain aesthetic to, of its own um, that uh, we kind of like. We've tried to stay very close to practical reality and the cutting edge of the near future thinking of interplanetary uh, missions. That's what's interesting about the Martian, because it's... Um, it's close to where we're going in the next couple of decades with space ex exploration and with cons consultation with, you know, people who are actually planning it, who are guiding us, 
not you know constraining us but guiding us um, hopefully we've come up with you know a, a blend that makes sense and also inspires the pre-visualization of some of the exterior um, Mars and deep space sequences uh, include the marrying up of physical sets and computer extensions of the Hermes ship and various um, launch vehicles and landing pods. All of those had to be integrated closely with the visual effects extensions. So, and as we're shooting, we're using um, simulcam technology to marry up physical sets with the digital extensions um, so that really can compose the frames which don't exist currently. While Ridley's shooting he's looking both at the real camera image and the projection extension that's to come and in that way he can better frame his shots and direct his actors. So we know where they're going when they make these vast leaps into space. The most intriguing set of all is the gravity wheel, the practical set that we built on a huge steel structure so that in conjunction with the rotation of the visual effects outside the window, which indicate the rotation of the gravity wheel by showing the rest of the ship turning, which implies that you're actually rotating. We've built this, um, the set so it could actually move hydraulically and give a bit of a suggestion of movement physically to the set in conjunction with moving lights that uh, portray the movement of the reflection of the sun on our solar panels of the ship and suggest movement as well. The rover itself, I mean, there's a functional picture vehicle which is actually going to um, be running across terrain very much like the surface of Mars on the deserts of Wadi Ram and will have to navigate efficiently and perform um, for real. That's also quite a big achievement for film. We built two of those uh, in record time and um, I think uh, we've blown it out of the park. This film, you know, incorporates all the technology that we've discussed um, about future space travel. But not only that, um, it, it embraces, you know, the risk and the perils um, in which our, you know, characters find themselves, which are real and um, engaging. And I think that is the core of the movie, how the human spirit deals, um, you know, with... Uh, the terrifying face of uh, total disaster and isolation. And um, that I think the audience will emotionally connect to strongly. How you choose to greet disaster, I think, is something that audiences will find extremely um, emotionally engaging.